course. It's all in this note. Enjoy your stay, and don't break nothing. Bounty. Bounty. Rumor has it that Forsworn raiding parties have been pushing further and further east along the Jarrow Mountains. The arrival of Legate Vicendal has prevented further incursions, but they failed to apprehend their leader, Crow's Tooth. While Crow's Tooth has been separated from her forces, she is believed to have fled with considerable spoils. In an effort to put an end to this threat, anyone killing Crow's Tooth may claim her stolen loot. Mercenaries, like infamous Sellsword but Jormund Windstrider, have been seen heading into the mountains beyond Darklight Tower. While they could be after the treasure, it is feared Crow's Tooth is gathering these forces for a renewed assault. We ask any capable warriors for their aid in dealing with this potential threat. Anuriel. Point, the bones of the dead rattle in their stone cages. But the old magic is strong in those mountains, and with the help of the cat who is a rat, a priest of Nomirino less, the crow will set them free. With his help, an army of bones will dance to our call, be the warriors, shadows, or beasts. Yet the cauldron shows the bones of two others, dragons in mortal flesh, who seek to challenge her inside towers of frost and stone. It will be up to the crow to pick both their bones clean.
I remember the first time Amshara showed me the tunnel, the one we had been burrowing for months. At first, I didn't understand it. We were already making good coin saking the carriages. What was the point of digging holes in the ground like the mine? It didn't help that the tunnel smelled like a troll's armpit. We reached the warehouse and walked by crates stacked upon crates like mountains of wood. Emshara led Emme to the back, where a dozen legions were unloading cargo too big for any box. On shores breath, I couldn't believe my eyes when I saw it. It was as good as I saw a carriage with fangs that touched the floor. For some von who wins at the sight of cliff racers, the idea of this monstrosity is soaring through the sky made my heart tremble. And yet, for the first time, I felt alive. For what better way to leave them to fight a dragon? What better way to die? Now that would be a story even soon would land on me too. You think the bones are special? You should see what this one found yesterday, Emshara said to me. Her grin was as wide as the hands of your vasker as she beckoned and me further into the warehouse. Inside a crate, set apart from the others, was Akira's a dragon woman made. Emshara bed and me to put it on, and I couldn't help but notice it was a perfect fit. In that moment, I thought of my dad. People call him a parrot, a murderer and a thief. But he told me the vent striders descended from the dragon guard, ancient warriors with who fashioned armor from the bones at the dragon station. Still, my pride as a moor wouldn't allow it. How could I face soon wearing the armor of another triumph? I could have the orc forge gauntlets and boots from the skull, but the kiras, that which held one's heart, must be earned in battle. My mind drifted them two stories I heard as a youngling, and my great ancestor Veho strove through fire like it was the well, wearing an ancient kiras made of dragon bone. It was then that I knew my destiny. In his honor I would claim it, and fight until the day I reached Songar. It's that same spirit that resides in me now. The others might be fine living in hiding, but Amur is at war as so long as he holds breath.